sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, thank you very much for coming, uh, everyone. I'm uh, Augustin de Laporte. I'm a general manager China for Platform SH. Um, and uh, I now live in uh, Shenzhen. I come originally from Paris, and uh, I've been sent to Shenzhen to expand uh, the Platform SH operations in China. Before we start into the deep dive coding session, I want to give you a little bit of history about where does Platform SH come from originally and why we are still uh, highly involved in the Drupal community and where we are going also in the, in the future. Originally, we were a company called Commerce Guys. I'm sure some of you have heard about Commerce Guys. Commerce Guys is the editor of a solution called Drupal Commerce, the Drupal suite and ecosystem for Drupal. So I joined Commerce Guys in 2011, early 2011, where we were still a very, very small team. Uh, we started building Drupal Commerce, and then we realized that we needed uh, distribution for people to understand how to configure commerce, because it's not easy to understand how commerce works, how it's integrated with Drupal 7. So we built this uh, solution called Commerce Kickstart. I'm sure some of you have heard about Commerce Kickstart. Uh, for, the, for the record, it's still the, high, the, the most downloaded distribution on Drupal.org. So very successful distribution. A lot of contribution came out of um, Commerce Kickstart, the admin team. A uh, lot of stuff come, uh, came out as a contribution. Uh, and it was really useful, for example, when you want to change the way that the Drupal installa installation works, when you want to customize the Drupal installation before Drupal even installs, when you want to select, for example, in Commerce Kickstart, before you even install Drupal, you select whether you want the demo store, demo content, you select whether you want a tax system or a shipping system, you, you have a lot of options that you can do before Drupal even installs, which are going to define the way that Drupal is going to install itself. So it was very exciting to work on that, uh, on that project. We also built a solution called Commerce Marketplace, which was uh, a website which was supposed to connect the merchants who uh, have a website, an e-commerce website, with the third-party vendors. So when you're a merchant and you have an e-commerce store, you need a third-party vendor, at least a payment gateway, right? Uh, PayPal or Stripe or whatever you're using. You also need sometimes a shipping provider. You need many multiple services, uh, analytics, marketing, multiple services. And we wanted a single place for merchants using Drupal Commerce to connect with those vendors and get information about the product and subscribe to the product. So we built that solution also. Um, and in addition to that, we also built a solution called Commerce Platform. Commerce Platform was a development and hosting solution for those e-commerce uh, sites using Drupal Commerce. Uh, here you have Ryan Zrama, the creator of Ubercart and then Drupal Commerce. Uh, Boyan Zivanovic, who uh, is uh, now the lead developer for Drupal Commerce. And you see that our marketing was not very uh, good at that time. Um, but basically, that's where Platform SH came from. Because uh, it was supposed to be Drupal solution. But we realized that we uh, could support any PHP application, uh, but not only PHP any language, any runtime, actually. So we uh, decided in 2014 to split the company uh, and separate from Commerce Guys and get to in, to, into our own route. So we called the company platform.sh, and we split it from, uh, from um, Commerce Guys. And, and very soon in the process, we started to become more than Drupal by um, getting, for example, Magento. So you guys know Magento. Um, Magento recently launched a um, cloud solution called Magento Cloud, their official cloud solution. And we are the company behind. They picked us to be their official cloud solution. So we are the Magento Cloud. We operate the cloud for them. Uh, we are also the cloud for Symfony, called the Symfony Cloud. So another PHP framework, which uh, chose us to be their cloud solution. And also Easy Publish. So Easy Publish, you, you, uh, you probably know the framework. They have launched their Easy Platform. It's a cloud solution for their project that they are selling on RB Alf. But we are behind that too. Uh, regarding WordPress, for example, it's not on that picture. But we are becoming the third largest WordPress uh, cloud company in the world uh, with uh, some very big projects that are coming uh, into our solution. Um, OK, maybe you don't really care about uh, why I'm telling that, but I think it's still interesting to see why we are uh, in, uh, in the Drupal world. OK, let's jump into the, the, the coding session. Today, we are going to talk about Drupal 8, Vue.js. It's a Node.js framework, Platform.sh a little bit, and GitHub. A quick prayer for the, 
for the demo gods, uh, so that they can help me to uh, succeed in that uh, in that challenge. Um, all right, let's get started. Uh, first, I'm going to create a platform SH project where I'm going to develop my decoupled Drupal website and my Node.js framework. How you create a project on Platform SH, either you go through the web UI and create your project, choose the region, either you do what I like to do and do everything from your terminal. I hope it's, uh, it's fine with you. Uh, so I simply um, start a command called Platform Project Create. Uh, I'm going to call it DC Singapore 2018. The platform command line interface is going to ask me on which region, uh, those are the regions that I have access to, on which region I want to deploy. Here I'm going to choose the Australian region, uh, which plan, doesn't really matter. Um, number of environments, the storage, I can keep that default. Continue. So at that time, the platform uh, bot is creating my project for me on Platform SH. That's the only thing I need to do to have a new project on Platform SH. We offer a free trial to uh, get you started if you, want to, uh, if you want to try. So you have a free trial for a month. And in the meantime, I'm also going to uh, get the Drupal 8 template that you need to use if you want to deploy a, a Drupal 8 website on Platform SH. So this template is a public repository on our GitHub. You have many, many templates for WordPress, Laravel, Drupal, Magento, Node, Java, anything. So you, you look for a template. What, what the template is, is really basically a configuration file called .platform.app.yaml, which define the uh, deployment process, build process, uh, everything. So I'm just cloning this repository locally. OK, the platform bot is done. So let me do a git clone of that repository on my local. I can kill this one. So I've cloned the template locally. I'm going to get, to use the command line interface also to get the new project that I've just created. So I'm just getting locally my new project, platform SH project, and I have the template for Drupal uh, that I've just cloned. Um, I can go to the new repository. I'm going to move the template, the Drupal 8 template, inside my repository. So I'm going to move the Drupal, no, the platform SH template, Drupal 8 template here. And uh, I'm going to, uh, yes, here. And I'm going to rename it as uh, just Drupal, OK, to make, uh, to make more. No, let's check on my uh, new repository. So that's the repository I'm ending, I'm, uh, ending up with, right? Mm -hmm. This is Singapore. I have the Drupal folder that I've just downloaded. And this is the platform.app.yaml that I have from GitHub. For more uh, efficiency, I'm going to rename this application because Platform SH supports multiple applications inside the same Git repository. So I want to rename this application to make more sense of my, uh, of my project. So I'm calling that application Drupal. And I'm actually going to um, move those two files, which are the routes and the services, to configuration files at the root of my Git repository. They are at the root of the template repository, but because I have multiple applications, I'm going to move that to the root of my Git repository. So let's do that uh, real quick. I'm moving the platform file routes into uh, my platform file and also the services into my platform repo. So let's look at uh, how it looks now. I have those two files here, right? So I can remove the dot platform here. And I can also remove the dot git that is inside my uh, Drupal template because I'm only going to use the platform git repository. Um, if we look at the routes file, you see that it just defines the URLs that your website is available, OK? Uh, and it's served by an application, so we need the same name. And because I've called it Drupal, I need to uh, change the name here. And I want my Drupal website to be available at api.something, something, something. OK, so I need to say 
API here, okay, HTTPS API something, and do the redirect to the same thing uh, API. Okay, so I'm serving, I'm just telling platform that I want to serve the Drupal application at API dot something, something, something. Does that make sense? Uh, all right, something else I need to do for um, my setup to work is to update the a file called the services.yaml, which is a new concept that has been provided by uh, Drupal 8, the services.yaml, and add what we call the course configuration. Course is the cross-origin resource sharing, and it's defined which domain can send uh, and accept requests from which domain, basically. Okay, so I'm taking that from the default services.yaml and putting that into my actual services.yaml. Okay, and I need to say, do you allow a course on this domain? I'm going to say yes, I want to allow that. Uh, and you can actually define which, uh, which uh, origin or which headers are going to be accepted. In my case, I don't really care, I'm going to accept everything. Uh, this should be fine. So now that we're set up, we can check that uh, we have everything running. Okay, I'm going to add anything to my project, git add oh, dash dash all, git commit Drupal application. And now I'm simply going to push to the platform uh, SH remote and it's going to automatically, uh, and that's when uh, I think uh, the uh, 4G is going to be uh, funky. Uh, it's going to actually deploy and uh, configure an entire infrastructure for me for my Drupal site. Okay, so it's going to create the web server, the uh, MySQL database that I've defined, um, everything that is defined in the .platform.app.yaml that uh, you can see from here. Uh, PHP 7.2 container, a MySQL database, this amount of resources, those, those specific volumes that I want to attach to my project, build everything with Composer, run this stuff during the deployment process, uh, configure the Nginx this way. You see that with Drupal, you want to make sure that uh, you don't allow any scripts on the writable uh, volume that is attached to your project, configure the crons and uh, whatnot. Okay, so reading this file, Platform Research will read this file and deploy it based on what you have on that file. Um, in the same time, what I can do is start setting up my Vue.js application also, the same way as I did with my um, Drupal application. So let's go to uh, Project Platform AU, the same repository that uh, I was on. Look for the Vue.js example. And because um, I've created the Vue.js example myself, we only have the Angular one. So uh, because I've created myself, it's not been approved by the entire company and maintained properly and everything. So it's still under my own GitHub, but it will end up in the Platform SH uh, GitHub. So Platform SH example Vue.js. Let's clone this thing. And we are going to call it in a repository in a repository in a folder called Vue.js, same way as we did with Drupal. And we are going to remove uh, the Git uh, folder from that uh, new repository. Oh, RM. So I'm just removing the Git uh, information of my Vue.js application. Um, now we can check what uh, Platform SH has done. You see that when you do a git push, you're not simply outputting the git result, but you're outputting the entire stream of actions that Platform SH is actually doing. So you see that it's uh, actually compressing the, uh, uh, the git uh, data and sending that, making sure that uh, you have, uh, if you have submodules, pulling the submodules, validating the configuration file, building the application, so here we are using this runtime, PHP 7.2. Uh, download the packages that have, that have been found in composer.log file. Downloading all those, info, all those um, dependencies. You don't want to have those dependencies inside your Git repository, by the way. You want your, repo your Git repository to be as light as possible and only commit the stuff that are custom to your application. Everything that is contributed needs to remain contributed so that when you want to update them, you simply change one line in your composer.json file, run composer update, and you have everything up to date. Uh, we've also done some uh, pre-flight checks for the security. 
in Platform SH, you cannot deploy an application which contains a known CVE. Okay, so if Drupal has um, a known CVE, like critical security issue, and you want to deploy this specific code base, it's going to block the deployment. We, can, we, we, we don't allow you to deploy something that contains a known CVE. Okay, that's security. We, uh, we do that for every framework that we want to maintain because we want to make sure we guarantee the infrastructure. Uh, compressing the application, uh, provisioning some uh, SSL certificates from Let's Encrypt for your development uh, domain, deploying Drupal, MySQL, providing those parts. Uh, and now if we go to the UI, Platform SH UI, for example, we should have our project that is ready. So it's called, it's not called PHP, it's called uh, Drupal DC Singapore 2018. That's a project I uh, created. I should see my commit on the application stream. From the UI, you also have the same information logs that uh, I have in my terminal. Everything I do in the terminal, I can do that from the UI, basically. Uh, and here in the access site, you see that I have the api.master-projectidau.platformsh. If I click on that project, I should have a ready-to-use Drupal environment, okay? Of course, it's not installed. I need to install that. I never install that from, uh, from here. I always use my terminal. Uh, so if we look at uh, the environment that we have, uh, we have the master environment. So. Uh, uh, there is a command called rush, uh, so you can do si site sub dir default if you want to install in, uh, in the, the specific uh, directory. It's uh, not active yet. And it should work on the second try. So uh, if you look here, uh, it says that the environment is inactive, which is not true, that just because my local command line interface has not refreshed its cache, so I need to run whatever command, and then it's going to refresh the cache, and the second try, uh, you see it says that it's not active, but actually it's active, but it thinks it's not active because it's the cache local is, uh, has been, uh, not been uh, refreshed. So I'm just installing Drupal here. Uh, as soon as Drupal is installed, I'm going to create a, a content type. Then I'm going to create a view to some content and a view to export the uh, JSON information. And right after that, we're going to focus on the Node.js pass and connect the two applications together. Drupal has been installed. So now if I go back to this website and I try to refresh, it's going to tell me, oh, it's already been installed. Perfect. So we have a Drupal site. I can connect to my admin uh, backend. And now I'm going to create the content type. No dash lane, I don't want to. So I'm doing some site building. You should be familiar with uh, what Because we went to a, a kind of a, a restaurant, a Singapore restaurant. So I decided to create a website to showcase some very famous local uh, Singapore food. So that's going to be the website we're going to put in production together right now. So uh, the content app is going to be called food. And the only thing I'm going to add, because it already had a title and a body, is the image field. So I'm just reusing the image field. Very simple, uh, simple stuff. Uh, the only thing I want to do is not require the uh, alt field, because I never fill in the alt field. Uh, it's best practice to do, but uh, I, I don't follow best practice sometimes. Um, some content, OK. I also thought about uh, creating a migration class to import my content, but in the end, uh, it was too much, uh, too much trouble. So I'm just going to add a couple of content. Uh, and I've put my content here. So you might, if you're from Singapore, you might recognize some of this, uh, some of this uh, food. I hope they are good because I want to try them all. Uh, right, so we'll start with the uh, Hainanese. It's probably not very Singaporean. Uh, the Hainanese, uh, whatever, chicken. Uh, but whatever, let's start with the, <laughs> the, the Hainanese stuff. And I don't need to fill the alternative text, which is great. Uh, I'm going to add like uh, 34 different uh, type of food because I, I, I'm leaving tomorrow, so I won't have time to try them all. Uh, but I, I'll try to come back and, uh, and have more time. Uh, chili crab is really something that uh, I, I wanted to try too. All right. I have the picture. Yeah, I did some Googling yesterday to try to find the best uh, Singaporean food. 
Any questions so far? Perfect. Either you're all uh, the, the sleepy. CLI, yep. Do you install it from something like the Brew, or do you install it from npm or some other repository? It's a Symfony console application, so it's available on GitHub. So you install it as a PHP package. Yeah, it's, uh, it's available on our, on our GitHub. So it's um, yeah, it's written with Symf with uh, its PHP code. Yeah. Okay, last one. Perfect. I have more, but I can uh, add them later. It's, that's not really the point of uh, this, uh, this session, and we're tied by the time. Okay, we're good. Let's create the view to uh, uh, promote our content. Oh, and before we create the view, something very important that I didn't do is uh, Drupal by default contains some modules related to web services. You need to install them, to enable them. Right? Those modules are going to provide, for example, a view export where you can, uh, exp you can export a view as a JSON, for example, or XML or whatever uh, data structure that you want. So I'm creating a very simple view that I'm going to call food API. And I'm not going to create a page or a block or anything. I'm just, uh, it's going to be called food. And on that uh, REST export, some very important thing that uh, I really encourage you to do is to choose a, a, a format, right? You don't want to uh, get that random. You want to make sure that the front end guy is going to be structured the same way as you want him to be structured. So I like JSON. I'm going to start with JSON. Uh, I always like to add a filter on the content type. So we are going to only export the food. Uh, and that should be pretty much it. So I save, and now if I go to food, I should be able to access the JSON of my content uh, exported directly, okay? So my Node.js uh, application will only have to consume those information and to connect them, and they will simply have to consume that information. Okay, let's focus to the Node.js then. Uh, let's move the Node.js that we have just cloned previously into our repository. So Vue.js, we call it here. Uh, if we look at what we have, we have the .git, the .platform, a Drupal application, and a Vue.js application. Let's do some updates on that uh, Vue.js application. Uh, so Drupal, we are done with Drupal for now. Uh, Vue.js application, let's call it uh, Vue.js. Same, we call the Drupal 1 uh, Drupal, so Vue.js, we call that uh, Vue.js. Uh, and for the routes, we're going to take the routes from Vue.js and paste it at the root of our repository, the same way as we did with, um, with Drupal, and make sure that the application that is actually serving this pass, this URL, is uh, actually um, the Vue.js one. I think the redirect should be better if we redirect to the front end. You don't want anybody accessing your back end. So let's uh, redirect to the front end. Uh, and that should be it for our uh, repository. We can remove inside the Vue.js uh, the platform folder. OK, and if we look at what we have added, we've simply updated the routes and added a new application. OK, let's commit that. Vue.js application. And it's going to um, do exactly the same thing as I did before for the, for the Drupal application, except that now it's not building a PHP application, but it's building a Node.js application. Okay, I've defined the version 6.9. Uh, I could upgrade, by the way. Uh, the build dependencies that I want, I'm not even using NPM. I decided to use Yarn. Uh, and then it's going to execute the build hook that are defined in my platform.app.yaml, which are defined here. And on the build hook, I say uh, yarn install and run npm run build. And npm run build should be defined in my package.json. Should find it here. Okay, so 
any technology would be supported by uh, Platform SH, but you need to tell Platform SH what to do. Okay, there is no magic. There is one configuration file that we're going to read, and we're going to do everything from um, from that uh, from that configuration file. Um, let's pray one more time. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, let's create a GitHub repository because, as you might know, we can connect any uh, Git repository and map it to your platform SH repository. So you don't need to push anything to platform SH. You can keep pushing to whatever Git server you're using and simply mirror the Git repository from, uh, from platform SH. So here I need to go to my profile probably and create a, a new repository. Repository, new. So the good thing is that after this session, you will be able to contribute to GitHub and uh, maintain that website. We can add a comment section or something. Uh, all right, DC Singapore 2018. Food, food, food. All right, and to connect a GitHub repository to Platform SH, you need a, what we call, a, what GitHub calls a personal access token to make sure that Platform SH can actually push code to your repository. So that's uh, what I'm going to do right now. Uh, it's inside settings. It has moved. Uh, it's now under developer settings. Uh, personal access token. Generate a new token. Oh, my GitHub password. Okay. Always use a password manager. Uh, and because it's a public repository, I can simply grant the public repo scope to that token. I don't need uh, anything else. It doesn't need to access any of my uh, private repository. And I need a, a name for that repository. For that token. OK, let's save that token for now uh, until we actually uh, deploy. So uh, deployment is complete. We now have a new URL, new route, OK, that for our application, which should be the Vue.js uh, application. So I didn't touch anything, so it's a very brand default Vue.js application. But you see that this pass is the default pass that I have in my routes configuration file. And I still have my Drupal site that is available here. Right? So API.something targets the Drupal application. And my default domain targets the Vue.js application. That's my front end. So now let's, uh, let's dig into some, uh, some coding. Um, and because I'm very bad at uh, JavaScript coding, uh, I actually have the snippets somewhere. And I'm going to copy paste and explain the, 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 the kind of uh, specific stuff that I did. Uh, so main.js. Uh, main.js is the entry point of, your, of our um, Vue.js application. So by default, it's very simple. Uh, I'm doing two stuff here, uh, two interesting stuff. I'm using view router and view resource. That's very basic if you want to uh, move to pages and do some uh, fancy stuff. The only actual thing that I'm using, which you might uh, uh, find weird in a Vue.js application, is this piece. I'm actually loading a platform SH viable package, which is available on NPM that we've written. And this package allows you to extract some information that are generated by platform SH to get information, for example, about um, the services that are deployed. Okay, your application here, the Vue.js application might have access to some services like a database, and the information, the connection information to that database are exported as environment viable, and you want to have your application to um, be able to extract those information to configure itself. That's the same for the routes. Okay, so here I'm extracting the uh, information, the platform SH information to find where is, uh, what is my domain, what is the other routes that are available for my project. In that case, I have two applications. So I have the API serving Drupal, the back end, and I have the front end, right? So I want my Vue.js application to find about the URL of my back end. And that's important to do that because you cannot hard code that because every time you create a new branch, you get a different URL, OK? So you want to make sure it's dynamic. And the, the way to make that dynamic is to e extract the variable and simply uh, in inject that in your application. If it's not super clear, we can discuss uh, about that a little bit um, uh, later. But that's, uh, seriously, that's the only thing that is a little bit um, specific to Platform SH uh, 
uh, on this uh, on this session. Uh, then I'm using my uh, main component, which is the uh, app view component. Here I've seriously simply stolen some code from uh, Twitter Bootstrap, which is what I'm going to use. Uh, Bootstrap template. So here it's uh, Singapore best food ever and uh, um, all the food you need to try out when in Singapore. Okay, so it's nothing fancy here. And you see the only thing I have is my router, my router view, which is going to load the different components that I have. It's um, a Vue.js concept. And now in components, I'm, um, I'm uh, just creating a new component that, is, uh, that I'm going to call home. Uh, okay, uh, home. And that's my uh, components where I'm going to load the information. Uh, I'm going to consume the API and, uh, and whatnot. I'm going to show you that right now. <clears throat> Anyone here has already worked with uh, Vue.js? A couple? OK. So that might be a little bit uh, weird or Angular or React. OK. Uh, the, the idea of those frameworks is to allow you to work with a kind of a, a virtual DOM and manage the virtual DOM and connect um, connect uh, HTML code with non-HTML uh, code. Like here, you're injecting. The only thing I'm doing here is loading some information. So I'm actually getting data from uh, an API pass. So the API pass, in my case, is uh, food, right? I have the, the, the normal uh, domain that I need to target because I've defined it from the platform message variable. So I'm just targeting the food pass. And here, uh, I'm uh, just getting the, the body from what I get from Drupal. So here is the piece which actually consumes the information from your Drupal backend. Right? And then I'm injecting what I got as a result uh, from the field, the Drupal field. Right? In, uh, in your JSON, you're exporting item.title, item.body. Uh, field image dot URL, all the information you can actually inject those directly into your templates in your front end. All right. Uh, so that that should really be uh, the only thing to uh, to do. If which if we if we verify that we have not done anything uh, wrong, we are going to commit that the same way. Uh, Connect backend with front end. Git push platform message. And something that I didn't uh, I didn't show show you before is while I deployed my um, my application, you see that there is some very interesting stuff that platform message is doing. Um, is that if you have not changed your application, if no code has changed in your application, we are not rebuilding your application at all. We get the tree ID from Git, and we know that we have already built that uh, application. So we don't need to rebuild it. If you didn't touch anything, the deployment is going to be super fast because there is nothing to change. And that's what we do when you go to production. If you build on an environment, let's say you create a new branch, you have a new environment, and you build something on that environment, you end up with a, a, a container, an archive. And when you deploy to production, you click Merge. We don't rebuild everything for the production. We just take the same build uh, container, and we clone it. And then you are, end up in production. That's why we can say that uh, that's our motto. We have stickers about that, like deploy on Fridays, because you can actually control exactly what uh, happens and what will happen when we will go to production before going to production on the development environments. Every development environment is a production environment. Um, all right, um, so we should be good. Uh, I'm sure you've, uh, you've uh, seen that uh, we have a uh, let's, uh, SSL certificate for every branch, for every development environment that, uh, that you provide. That's also good to check before you're in production that you're not loading any unsecured uh, assets, for example, image or uh, libraries or anything. Um, all right, we have the access token. Oh, I think I forgot to create um, the to enable Bootstrap. 
yeah, I've, uh, I'm using Twitter Bootstrap, but I have not um, enabled t Twitter Bootstrap. So let's do that right now. Uh, I think it's right uh, here. Because if you don't import uh, the library that you're using, you cannot use it. That's uh, also uh, specific to, um, to uh, Vue.js. So here I'm simply importing uh, the Bootstrap view component. It's a connection between uh, Vue.js and Bootstrap. I'm loading their CSS files and I'm using this uh, Bootstrap. Okay, so now uh, before that, I think it's going to read my template, but it doesn't have any uh, connection to the CSS, Bootstrap CSS files or JavaScript files or anything. So if I want that, I need to, uh, to add them this way. Um, if we look at what we have, Uh, you see that it looks ugly because uh, Bootstrap is not enabled, okay? But uh, we, it's still a wow effect because uh, we have the image on our front end that are loaded from our back end in a couple of uh, minutes, actually, right? So we are actually loading content from Drupal directly from our um, Vue.js application. Now let's connect to GitHub and uh, do the change with Bootstrap. So that's another wow effect. Um, <laughs> Uh, all right, so there is a command. Uh, I don't know it by heart, so let's go to the platform message documentation. Great resource, by the way, uh, if you're stuck. So uh, platform message documentation, let's look for GitHub. GitHub, 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 GitHub. Okay, let's uh, find GitHub here. Uh, okay, so there is one command to run to integrate with GitHub, and that's this one. Okay, platform integration had. So name of the repository that we've just created. I don't know it by heart also. That's the one. Gugus DC Singapore. All right. Name of the repository, user token that we've created. Um. Oh no. Good. Okay. Uh, and the project ID that uh, you're on, so that platform knows on which project to connect your GitHub to. Okay. Uh, oh, a couple of questions that it's going to ask because you have many ways of integrating with GitHub. Maybe you want to build, to deploy every branch that you're pushing. Maybe you want to build and deploy only the pull requests. Maybe you want to build the pull request with the data. Maybe you want to build the pull request without the data. So. I, I'm going to keep everything by default, but there are many different options and ways you can actually integrate your own Git repository with uh, something else. So here the integration has been done. That's how you connect to GitHub. Uh, let's add the actual GitHub uh, remote here. Git push, uh, no, Git clone. Git remote add, uh, let's call it GitHub. So we have a GitHub remote and a platform remote, but we can only push to the GitHub remote so, and deploy to platform SH. Git remote had GitHub. And now if we do a Git push uh, GitHub master, you see that here I'm only pushing to GitHub. I don't have any information from platform SH because I'm pushing to GitHub the way that I used to push. And uh, the reason why you want to use GitHub is because GitHub is a great tool for code review, great tool for collaboration. We are not a code review system. We are a deployment uh, QA and production system. We don't want to manage your code review. We don't want to manage your application. You choose the tools that you're, you like and you're good at, uh, and we uh, will manage the rest. Uh, so now if I refresh this page on my GitHub, it's a public repo, so you can already uh, browse this repository. If someone wants to add a readme to that uh, with all the steps that uh, we went through, feel free to, to, do, <laughs> to do that. Um, all right, and now, yeah, let's uh, enable Bootstrap and go to production, and we will be almost done. So git checkout dash b created the new branch Bootstrap. What is the difference? Yep, git add bootstrap git commit import bootstrap git push git hub mass uh, bootstrap i'm now pushing to uh, a different branch 
All right? So in GitHub, you should see that branch, bootstrap, and now I can automatically create a pull request. I will be reviewing myself, so I don't really need a pull request, but this is bad, best practice to actually create pull request. In that case, I follow the best practice. Um, no merge conflict. And here you see in GitHub, oh, something has happened. A platform deployment is in process, so you know that uh, at the moment, you have a, a platform environment that is deploying, and when it's uh, done, either it's green or it's red, but orange is really uh, at the beginning. But uh, when it's green, you have access to the URL and your application with that specific pull request, and it, when it's uh, red, that means something went wrong with the uh, deployment, so it sends you back to here. Uh, and here on the platform SHUI, you see that an environment is being created with my commit that I push from GitHub, and it's the actual GitHub integration that pushed that environment. So here, I'm actually getting uh, a new environment for this branch with a clone of my database. I have a new database. The two applications are cloned. It's completely separated environments, but they are an exact copy. That's what's important. And you can have as many pull requests, as many branches as you uh, want or need. Uh, every developer in your team can have its own uh, environment. Every ticket can have its own environment. Um, you, you, you organize and structure the, your environments the way you uh, you, uh, you want or like. Um, and as soon as we, uh, we are able to, uh, to test that environment, we can merge it to production and then go to production with the environment. Oh yeah, to go to production, we need a domain. Good thing is that I have a domain ready for that. So we'll use that. Um, what's the path of our application? So that's our front end, master something. So let's add a domain here. I'm using Namecheap. Name um, so DNS, add a new record. So I have a domain called jump into the cloud, jump into the dot cloud. And that's the, the one that, um, that I will be using. So I'm adding a CNAME record to this front end. And here I can uh, give it a, a prefix. Should it be like food? Dot jump into the cloud, yeah, or DC Singapore, so that I can redo this session later. Yeah, <laughs> DC Singapore 2018. Uh, no food. That's <laughs> uh, all right. And uh, the important thing is that uh, because your domain is going to target two completely separate applications, you also need a C name for the API to serve the the Drupal pass. Okay, so you need actually two C name in that case, and the C name that I'm targeting is API.food, and here it's targeting API.master. something something something. Is it uh, yeah API.master or something something something? How are we? Okay. Oh no, I need a uh, less than uh, automatic because it's going to take forever, and we only have ten minutes left. So. Probably uh, less than. Uh. Right, we're good. Um, so let's verify that our bootstrap front end works. If it looks good, we go to production. If it doesn't, we can. Uh, we have five minutes to do some uh, tweaking or fine tuning or uh, whatever. Come on, Wi-Fi, I need you. <laughs> Don't let me down. Okay, let's try to merge it. So here I can either merge from um, from um, the CLI or Git or the directly from here. I'm going to merge it from here. Oh no, I should have used GitHub to merge. That would have been uh, smarter because next time I'm going to use GitHub and merge the GitHub pull request, it's going to be built because GitHub takes the authority on the um, on the thing. Yeah, that was a bad move. <laughs> All right, um, any question for now? Yep. Uh, so if you enable the integration of GitHub inside a platform, what happens if you push only to platform? Would you have an error or? Uh, so it will redeploy on platform side, yeah. but the next time you deploy on GitHub, it will override what you have on platform because the authority repository is the GitHub one. Yes. Only to the repo. 
yes, you can still push only to platform, but next time it's going to override uh, the thing. Yeah. So that's what you just did. You just merged the repos on platform. Yes. Instead of merging the ones in. Exactly. So if you merge now in Git, it <laughs> just override what it's doing. Now. Exactly, but it's the same commit, so it's uh, it's going to redeploy the same thing, but it will override uh, the thing. Um, To push what? Force, because they diverged. Force pushed? Yeah. Yeah? I think they diverged. Oh, you could. If you merge the PR, they would have diverged because you have... No, but it takes the authority, so it doesn't care about what's already in platform. The authority is GitHub. So now, if, I, if, if we do that now, um, l l merge this pull request. You could have pulled from... Uh, you see, it's... Yes, exactly, exactly. Then you have to close the field. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you see, it say, it, this error says that uh, I cannot get the import bootstrap uh, environment because it's been deleted because the environment uh, has been uh, merged. So the, the, the environment doesn't exist. When I merge an environment, I don't want to keep the environment idling forever. I want to keep environments, right? Uh, so we are good. Actually, it's pretty smart. You see, it's, it, it was very, uh, very, um, very fast uh, because it's exactly rebuilding the same thing, right? So even though I've pushed to two different remotes, it went super fast. And now the, the, the last uh, step is to add the domain. Uh, I can do that from the CLI or I can do that from here. I will do that from here to show you our awesome UI. How do we call that? Food. Food dot jump into the cloud, add domain, uh, and we probably need the, no, that should be fine. Uh, the redirect will, be, uh, will, will work. So as soon as the domain has been added, here we are just refreshing the routes uh, internally, and as soon as the domain, it will be right on time. Uh, as soon as the domain has been added, we are in production. Deploy on Saturday, <laughs> yeah. I don't work on Saturday usually. So, uh, uh, but it looks uh, quite good, right? Oh, nice! Look at that. The Vue.js, my Vue.js integration didn't escape the uh, the the <laughs> the p fun. So I can uh, to f yeah to fix that. I could actually um, I can the, the, the easiest way. Oh, we talked about that last time. Um, so with the, in Drupal 8, you have a new text formats and editors. Uh, by default, it's, uh, it doesn't let you uh, use plain text, right? Uh, and my content, if I go to my content and I edit uh, the, the, the Hainanese uh, chicken rice, uh, it's not going to let me uh, use plain text by default. So you need to configure the plain text and say exactly how you want plain text. I think it's a bit... Uh, <laughs> Not dumb, but, uh, and here, if you actually change the content from here and you refresh, um, the, the, the P are not there anymore, you see? Uh, you can actually uh, bypass this plain text stuff by going to the source. This is a little bit weird. Uh, anyway, uh, how come we're still, uh, we're still loading the domain? So what happens uh, when I'm adding a domain is that I'm generating SSL certificate for that specific domain, right? And if the, the, um, the configuration has not been spreaded for that specific domain, uh, it can actually take a, a while to provision the certificate. So what happens most of the time, it says, yeah, so missing certificate for this domain will retry in a couple of, uh, uh, in the background in a couple of, uh, of uh, times. Right, unable to validate domain for this, uh, for this, uh, unable to uh, validate SSL certificate for this domain, so it's going to retry in the background. But that, uh, that should not uh, block the deployment anyway. Um, so yeah, deployment will, uh, will happen. Would it, the deployment also, uh, okay. would it also rebuild the VJS app because of the that environment variables that we're passing? That's a good question. Actually, no, because the variables are loaded at runtime. So once you have the, the information, you can load the routes while the app is running. 
It's not at build time, it's at runtime. So and during the run, you have... Yes, exactly, exactly. So that's, uh, you don't need to rebuild anything. Let's pray the demo god one more, once more, before we load the domain. And I will uh, allow, to, allow you guys to, uh, to tweet about the, this uh, awesome new website that we just created all together. Jump into the cloud. Oh, it has, oh yeah, it has the SSL certificate. It just didn't create the SSL certificate for the, um, let's fix the image now, <laughs> for the uh, uh, www domain. But this pass went fine. We didn't pray hard enough. Uh, what happens to the images? Pending. It's trying to load this. Uh, okay, it's still trying to load the uh, the old uh, the old URL which are not available. Maybe I need to add. Uh, Because what happened here is that when you uh, add a domain, the old routes that are master dash something something are not available anymore. You need to use the domain. So here it's trying to load the images on the Drupal site that are, uh, that are behind and it cannot access them. So I hope this is uh, how, uh, how we, can, uh, we can fix that. And we are yeah, almost uh, done with the time. So, um, and the Wi-Fi was not so bad actually, yeah, pretty good, yeah, it's fine, come on, come back online, now I cannot access it anymore, anyway, let's forget my last action, <laughs> um, all right, any other question? Nope. Yep. Can we customize the build process, the YAML file that we pull in? Yep, uh, good question. Actually, you can. Uh, you go through this. Uh, let's look at the Drupal one. That's going to be more uh, speaking to you. Uh, on, the, on the Drupal one, we, uh, we have this. Uh, oh, no, we don't have one for the Drupal one. That, that will actually be uh, this, uh, this thing. Um, and here you say, you can actually do uh, your composer with authentication, for example, here, or a composer install or whatever. If you do that, you need to remove this build flavor because that means I don't want you platform to do any magic. I want me to define what I want to do. The same as we did with the uh, Node.js uh, application. Here we define the build process. You can load external libraries, build your own components directly for your project. Um, yeah, you have lots of control on what you want to, uh, to do during the build process. All right, thank you very much, guys, for your, uh, for your time. I hope it was uh, entertaining. And um, yeah, don't hesitate to try it out or uh, talk to us. Chris is here with me, too. So don't hesitate to uh, come talk to us. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.